does it matter? Nowhere is perfect. Uh, but wherever you are, you could get the good things from the bad things. There's good things everywhere. You know, there may be some things that are good here that are lacking in other places. There may be some things in other places that are like lacking here. But this is why I admire this opportunity we've had with cryptocurrency. There has never been anything where the world, the whole world, could come together. Could you guys imagine when, right now we're talking about 5%, right? Could you imagine when it's like 30%, 40%, 50% of the world population? It's going to get there, guys, faster than we think, right? There's going to be a time where crypto adoption is going to happen so fast. And people say, well, you know, we may not experience a bull market like this one. But then again, who's to say, right? We don't know. Because if everything is transitioning to the blockchain, I mean everything, think about it. Is it there going to be like ridiculous opportunities to these transitions? We are at the very beginning and people are already saying, well, this is, this is it. This is it. We are at the beginning. And I, I cannot really put my mind, you know, uh, around the aspects of, well, you know, this is it. No, it's just, it's just the beginning. This is the beginning of something great. And it's going to last for a long time. If this transition is what we think it's going to be, then at that point, there's going to be a lot of opportunity. At least that's in my opinion. No, and I think you're 100% right. I think that, you know, with this bull run, I think what's going to happen is, is we're going to see the largest straight up... Um, literally straight up uh growth charts that we've ever seen um and that's going to be what will happen to kind of set what i would call like a baseline for what will happen as what i would call mod the modern adoption age uh happens right where in my opinion where mass adoption will take place amongst um the developing world for the simple fact that uh Smartphone usage is finally at the point where uh, the majority of people have the technology in their hands now to actually complete, uh, you know, these type of transactions. And so it gives them the ability to actually communicate, whether it's through NFC or, uh, you know, Bluetooth, whatever, right? There's a lot of different ways that people can communicate to make payments, so on and so forth. And I think that's one aspect of it. And the other aspect is, is that as we tokenize everything, as all um, business and commerce becomes tokenized, I think what we'll start to see is more like, um, like an escalator. You know what I mean? And, and it's just going to be like kind of like the steady climb up. I think that will, in my opinion, be a little bit more of what the, the growth will look like. It'll be steady over time. Not slow growth. I mean, for the for, for the next, I mean, I want to be bullish here, but I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to over, I never want to over, you know, say anything for the simple fact that I try to always be very reasonable in my uh, predictions. But what I would say is that, you know, from my point of view, from my perspective, I see that, you know, with real estate and the, you know, in the situation that it is, the banks in the situation that they're in, so many other um, categories of financial, um, you know, existence in our country. I think that as those become tokenized, you know, one of two things really can happen. Now, there could be a, a terrible slide like the gentleman the other night talked about, but I just don't think it's going to happen for the simple fact that as I've said before, we're a world economy. And when you're a world economy, we all depend on each other to be successful. And at the end of the day, um, we need China just like China needs us. And we need India just like India needs us. And all these very large economies need each other. And I think that the growth will be consistent, will be um, good for at least 10 years. And, and I really believe that because at the end of the day, this bull run, in my opinion, will last for two to three years of extreme, um, on, you know, uncapped growth where it's just, um, I don't want to say you can throw, a, you know, paper at the wall and it'll stick to it, but 
you, you know how it is. Like, it, it, things that shouldn't take off will take off, and that's just kind of the way that, you know, that the bull runs go. But as things settle down, I think, and tokenization and mass adoption becomes the, the biggest thing on, you know, on the board, um, more and more people will make money off of that, uh, you know, that in-between area and that growth area that we're talking about, real estate, um, you know, traditional finance, things like that. Aki, go ahead, brother. Hey, thanks a lot, Kill Switch. Uh, so I just wanted to expand on what you said. Good evening, uh, good afternoon, good night, wherever you may be at on the globe. But I'd like to expand on what you said. I absolutely support your statement in saying that uh, we all depend on each other uh, for this type of economy and because it's global, because we're attached by uh, internet, because we're attached by cell phones, because we're attached by applications in the blockchain technology. I do believe this and the reason I believe this is because of all the positioning that has happened in the past uh, two or three years in terms of China. They've banned it. They've got their CBDC in place. Now they've allowed Bitcoin again. They know the value. Otherwise, they wouldn't ban it. They're trying to retain control of their population per se, in my opinion, with the CBDC, according to all their social uh, profiling and uh, systems in place. Um, so they see the value, not to get off topic, but they see the value of cryptocurrency. And that's one of the reasons why they kind of uh, stalled it by banning it. And now they reinstituted it. Um, you see a lot of countries, uh, you know, coming up with their own rendition of uh, how they are going to interact with this new technology, knowing that uh, it is going to be the next iteration of financial uh, communications and systems through the world and globally. And because they know it's a global uh, system that is going to fall into place, each country is emulating this under their own you know, criteria, whether it be uh, communism or socialism or uh, democracy. Uh, they're all exhibiting these with the different rules, regulations, uh, different taxations. So, yeah, everybody uh, is definitely involved in it because they see the value of it. And they're coming out with their own iterations. And we'll see how this plays out, man. You know, once again, I've said this in, you know, before is that, you know, this is just like the Internet. You know, it starts out very basic and then it kind of ramps up into the more evolved, mature form. And I think that it's going to happen uh faster in terms of uh, the reach of cryptocurrency, but it's going to take a little bit of time for us to truly see the innovations that will impact the rest of the world. I mean, we see a lot of things coming out now that uh, are kind of granting people that are early adopters or, or in early crypto a lot of money because we're ahead of the curve. Also, you know, some of these systems like uh, Internet of All Things uh, are granting, you know, the opportunity to make money off of, uh, <clears throat> you know, the system set up. So, um, you know, this is not just going to be, uh, you know, per country. This is going to be a global thing. And I do believe that meme coins are going to be on that block as well. And, and I just shouted those out because, you know, meme coins are driven off of community. So why not have a global community that participates, uh, you know, in this global economy, of course. And and I think, you know, that's that's another thing that, you know, may surprise people is, is a meme coin out there. It's not just going to be the innovation of utilities or um, DeFi or... Um, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, I definitely um, believe that there's a lot of money to be made globally. Uh, and you just have to be early, do your research, and, uh, you know, kind of follow the trends on how things are going to um, evolve over time. And, you know, just like uh, what happened with the, the dot-com boom, you know, all the projects aren't going to survive. Only the strong survive. And, and you know, the, the developers that see the future are willing to accept the changes that are given to us by governments and countries. And those are the ones with the foresight to prepare ahead, uh, you know, of regulation and, you know, the, the sentiment in terms of, you know, privacy. And, and I think there, there's going to be a level of privacy with the global economy. But, you know, I think it's going to depend, A, globally, B, it's going to depend on your country uh, and and C it's going to depend on you know uh, you know companies versus the individual so we'll see how that unfolds man I'm excited to see that thanks and I, I know I know kills I know um 
uh, Toltani want to do his uh, motivational thing. So the space haven't started yet until the motivational thing, okay? But I do have one thing I have to say before we start preaching the motivational thing. And it's more so about something Toltani have said, uh, like we discuss all the time between Toltani and Kill Switch, and he said it in the space all the time, right? It's one thing to be an investor, but it's another thing to be a creator in this space. Now, when they say do your own research, I hope that goes within your mind as a process as I need to educate myself, not just about a project, but more so about everything that's happening in this space, whatever information that you could consume, consume it. Why am I saying this? Understand this, right? We're living in a time where technology is booming. It changes so fast, it's not even funny, right? And there has been fear that has been discussed in relating to AI technology, right? And robotics, the jobs that's going to be lost to technology. Some people think it won't have any effect, but I'm in the space. I'm on the internet. I'm watching. It's, it's going to have a major effect, right? Now, thank God we've been introduced with this drastic change with cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is going to change. The blockchain is going to change everything. That present, it's going to present so much opportunity. It's going to be for the people that's going to be able to work in the space. And with because of blockchain, now we have the metaverse, which is a whole new world. That's not even in the beginning phase of its potential yet. So, it's a lot of us that's not going to be able to work in the same work field that we're currently working. And that's a guarantee. But for those of us that are the first generation of this crypto community, the more we know, the more we're positioning ourselves to, yes, make money now if you can, but also play a part and working in the field of anything relating to the blockchain. So you have an option to transition. You can transition whenever these jobs will start opening up, these new careers will start opening up. Even if you have to go back to school to get a certificate, the little extra degree that is based on the blockchain, but you are already ahead of the game. You know, like when we talk about it, it's only 4 5% of the world population. Think about all these people that's going to be coming. It's not going to remain the same. As we're talking about adoption, it's going to happen. There's no way around it because the whole financial system has to change. It needs an upgrade. And crypto is the way. So just kind of like some things to think about, you know, uh, when we think about being in this space and doing our research, educating ourselves, it goes beyond just trying to invest into a project and 100x or 200x. It goes beyond that, you know. You might have to turn around and teach your family member eventually. You may have to turn around and teach your friends, your kids. And I hope some of us are doing that because I sure as hell am. All right? So, yeah. All right, Toltani, you go ahead on and start preaching the, the motivational gospel. The motivational gospel. I, I just <laughs> wanted to say to Aki real quick, too. I just wanted to say I, I, I agree with you, and I think that we will get to the point that we get over this little hump of, you know, this issue with mass adoption. But I do think what will happen eventually is, and I'm probably giving out free game here again, but I do think things like uh, different provincial uh, tokens will start to pop up in China. I think that will be something that China does, um, depending on where you live, what you can buy, things like that. And I think that will become the same thing in Russia. Um, and more concentrated countries and places like here in the United States will have the type of access that we do now. So I think that's how we eventually get to mass adoption. Is that fair? No, like you said, it's going to depend on where you live and uh, you know who your government is um, and social, uh, you know, social watching of people and social behavior is a very scary uh thought um uh, you know how they're doing it in china at least 
Um, but yeah, I, I just find it all very fascinating. And I think that we're a lot more interconnected than we all understand. No, well, thank you. Obviously, thank you, thank you. Uh, we will get to the Sorry, location to like always. I, no, hey, no, I, I love the conversations always. They're 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 the most important. You know, the motivational thing is lovely and, and amazing as well, but uh, the conversations are always the most important. But you know, first off, obviously, Mister Kill Switch uh, going to start doing his. His uh his his uh space with I, I know he has uh, recruited a couple a couple individuals to co-host with him you know once a week I think uh, obviously congratulations first but I think it's another another great space that will be out there uh, to continue to you know spread the spread the spread the message and and continue to help change the narrative in the space and. Uh, we need as many great spaces out here as possible uh, to utilize this platform as much as possible. So definitely look forward to those spaces uh, when you announce that they'll actually be taking place and what time. Uh, so thank you and congratulations. And then Mr. Burt, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will get to this one. I do have one picked out tonight. It is best goal setting video for success so it's no <laughs> no but uh it's this one's shorter than the, the previous couple ones we listened to so everybody i hope enjoy it just give me a thumbs up so i make sure you can hear it and then obviously we will get back to the wonderful conversations that are taking place in the space so I'm, we're laying on our deathbed you're not going to worry about how much money you had, how much power you had, how much prestige. You're going to see that that was all a game, that that was all an illusion. The only thing that's going to matter is the impact you had on other people's lives. We are all on a separate journey. But the beautiful thing about our life here on this earth is that my funeral... They ain't gonna talk about my success. They're gonna talk about who Nick was and how Nick lived and how Nick loved and encouraged. Success is incredibly important, but even more important than success is having an impact. It's knowing you haven't walked the planet in vain it's knowing that because you've been here, you've blessed lives, you've developed people, and you have made the world a better place. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Everything you gain in life will rot and fall apart, and all that will be left of you is what was in your heart. Life is a mirror. And life gives us not what we want. Life gives us who we are. When you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. Well, sorry for my Elon Musk moment there. Uh, with the technical difficulties on the uh, motivational <laughs> sector, I'm, I'm gonna cry uh, now. No, but but it's a short, short, powerful message. 100 percent sure. You know, it's something that I've talked about many times uh, with kill switch other people is, you know, what I kind of get from that is like start, it brings up one word for me, and that's legacy. 
uh, in what we do today and what we do tomorrow, what we do for the rest of the days we are on this this rock that we do call home, uh, will be how we define uh, ourselves as well as our, the legacy we leave behind. Uh, and I think many of us want to achieve, you know, financial freedom for ourselves as well as for our families and the ultimate goal of reaching generational, you know, wealth. Uh, in that regards, I mean, that's just one, uh, obviously, aspect uh, of a legacy. Uh, many other things come into, obviously, into effect when it, it comes to leaving a legacy, the kind of person you are, the kind of things you did, uh, as well as many other aspects. And it takes time to build a legacy, per se. So uh, it's, a very, it's, a, it's a very big word, I would say, you know, uh, especially when it comes to all of us and, you know, truly what we want to leave behind. Yes, we want to make sure financially that our family, our kids, our grandkids, and hopefully generations to come are fine. Uh, but we also hopefully that people will have high regards for us, even generations away from now, uh, when they talk about, you know, Mr. Bird or Killswitch or Mutasco or D Tech or Boss or Fabio or Jesse or SB. I mean, all of us, you know. So, for short video, but like I said, very powerful and it does make me think of, of the word legacy. So, yeah, I thought you were talking about the plane, the Embraer legacy, the private jet. I thought you were talking about leaving a private jet for your family. I just wasn't sure. Uh, that'd be a waste of money. <laughs> just spend no, no, no. If you look at, you know, cost per hour, I mean, it's if, for how much we fly, I mean, it might, might be where, I don't know, just, just a thought. We'll rent one. We'll rent one, you know, no problem. But no, absolutely, legacy is massive. You, you never get to leave this place with what you accumulated through your lifetime. And I think, you know, how people feel about you and what they say about you after you're gone is much more impactful um, than, you know, anything that you can amass uh, throughout your life, leaving a real impact on others and having uh, a positive impact on those that you come into contact with is something that, uh, you know, not a lot of people genuinely get to say, like, I had the time where I was able to really sit and focus on, you know, the people that I came into contact with on a daily basis. And I think that that's something that crypto has given me is a little bit more time to slow down and, and look at the clarity of things and, and look at people for, you know, hear them out fully and understand, you know, exactly where they're coming from, as opposed to when you're living that kind of busy bee lifestyle of, I got to get to the next thing, got to get to the next thing. And I think that leaving a legacy, you know, is also about the example that we set for our children that we set, you know, uh, in our relationships, you know, our kids see how we engage with our significant others, they see how we engage with them, and uh, that stuff means a lot, and, uh, you know, a lot of us are very busy people, and I think that one thing that a lot of people that I know who are older, who I've personally talked to about what is the one thing that you wish you had more of, and this is, you know, very wealthy people, and I think anybody knows what I'm going to say, uh, it's time, and, you know, they all wish that they would have had more time, or that they would have um, had a better balance between work and, uh, and life, and so I would just say I always encourage people personally, um, and any of my recommendations are just literally what I, what I think, nothing special, um, but personally, there's a huge thing between, you know, a huge balance between spending the correct amount of time on work and uh, making sure that you spend the correct amount of time on family and uh, and yourself as well. Mental health is important, and uh, so it's taking care of your family and being there for your kids. So definitely that's the best way, in my opinion, to leave a lasting legacy.
I think, uh, before Aki goes, I think uh, when we talk about this uh, uh, motivational video, right, it was short, but it was extremely powerful. And the key word that I took out of it is something that I actually uh, spent some, quite a bit of time trying to understand and try to respect is life is a mirror. That is a very powerful statement if you know anything about how life works on a more, you know, not to get biblical, but on a more spiritual level, right? Within, right? Because everything starts within. As the saying goes, if you believe, you can achieve. If you're in crypto right now, there may be millions of dollars just going around and people, and people are making money if you don't believe that you 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 deserve a piece of the pie, then you're not gonna get there. First, you have to believe, and the more informed you are, the more you becoming more understanding of the space. The more you're gonna believe that hey, I can do it. You cannot make anything happen until you believe. That's why education is important. It allows you to become informed. The more you understand, the more you believe. The more you understand, the more you believe that you can make it happen. Right? So it all starts within. So, it's... Listen, there's so much I could say about this, but this is what I, this is my takeaway from this message. It's a very powerful message. It's also just understand this. If you're in this space right now, sometimes you have to sit back and think to yourself like, okay, out of all the people in the world, why was it me? We say it's 5, 5%, 3%, some people say 3%, whatever percentage. At this, out of this little percentage, why am I here? You could have been just like any, the, the rest of the 95%. Don't know, don't care. That actually means a whole lot. You deserve to be here. There's something you need to get from here. And I know we have went through rug pulls. We went through scams and all kinds of crazy stuff. There's a reason why you had to go through that. So that's all I'm going to say. Bert, um, I think that you've said something great. You know, ask yourself, you know, I think in part, I definitely believe in fate. You know, what, why are we so early? Why are we part of the select few that are already in crypto? Uh, this is something you need to ask, and, and I, I do appreciate that Mr. Bert has brought that up because I think there's something to think about, man. Maybe we're the chosen few because this is the time to build that legacy that has been talked about to build an opportunity to uh, take advantage of this early technology. And, or maybe it's to actually to expand off of what Killswitch said. I, I firmly believe it's really important to capture the fact that time is a commodity that you can't get back, man. And it's one of the most valuable commodities out there, time. And... You know, once you realize that, once you get your head in that perception, then you understand. You know, sometimes you're out here, you're working 12-hour shifts or 14-hour shifts, or maybe you have two jobs, or maybe you spend 90% of your time traveling on the road, and you don't realize that you're away from your family or you're away from maybe those goals that you wanted to achieve. Crypto is here to change the game, man. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. And, you know, I think that if you're in this group and if you come in contact with people that understand that time is a commodity, maybe that'll open up your perception, you know, or maybe you can open the perception up of people that run the rat race and don't understand that there is an opportunity to take back some of that time that's lost on what society has crafted to be the American dream. Well, maybe you can change the American dream. Maybe it doesn't have to be working you know, extremely hard at that job. And, and maybe there is value to that. Maybe you're contributing to that company or country or you're contributing to the value that you're bringing to your family. Uh, you know, so maybe this is an opportunity to capture back some of that time that you've lost. Thanks.
No, thank you, Aki. Mr. Burr, Kill Switch. I think you guys made a lot of a lot of good points, and uh, I definitely want to take a moment to say thank you to everybody that's in here that's joined us. Uh, I know that they kind of said it, but Mutasco, Fong, Crypto Latina, Crypto Dave, Cider Chain 808, <coughs> Mark My Words, Boss, Antrock, Donna, SB, Jesse, Sam, Rage, Gato, Cider Chain, Baby, Mario, Matthew, Alexandru, Wise, Morgan, Dr. O, Corey, Gin, Gin Token, Gin Token, Stone, Rex, Cool Dad, everybody that's here from STC to Volt to Pepe Community to Dog. Shout out to all of you guys. I definitely want to say I appreciate everybody taking the time to tonight to come in here and, and partake on, you know, these conversations and you know, people coming in here and, and we always we always appreciate, like I said, if you wanna come up and partake in the conversation or you got some information to share or, you know, maybe a new project you're looking at or anything, always feel free to request and uh, come up and, and, and join us up here. So, but I just wanted to take a second to say, give shout outs to people as well as, as well as project communities. So thank you all. I did put a post up, uh, up top. Uh, I did have, I've had several DMs of people asking me like, Hey, is there a discord? Is there a telegram? You know, for people that, you know, for that come into these spaces and want to connect more. Uh, and I was like, no. Uh, but after getting so many requests, uh, I'm actually going to create a, tele a telegram group. Today I was kind of working on a, a, a logo and, and stuff for the telegram group. As you can and kind of see up above, uh, I kind of was messing around with designs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's where it's at. I think it's a kind of cool logo that I finally got to work out uh, using, a, obviously, a, a, a program online to obviously assist and help me. But uh, I think it it's a good representation uh, of what we're trying to do over here. So. Just want to let everybody know, so stay tuned. We will be having a, a, a Telegram group that everybody can join uh, as another place to congregate and communicate and all that other stuff. So, Bro, like, let me tell you this, right? I think so many spaces back, I don't remember, but I, I remember mentioning this to you. I don't know if it was on this platform or, and I was like, man, is this group, we have a name for this group? I don't know if you remember me asking you this, right? So when I went on X today and I saw that, I was like, yo, okay, cool. So, you know, and I and I do think that this was something that was needed. But then again, hell, great minds think alike. So when I saw that, I was very excited because I do think that Telegram plays a big role into crypto as well. Uh, a community on X is not the same as a community on Telegram. So to be able to actually have both and streamline people, you know, uh, on a more, I think, on a more private, personal way, in a sense. I think that's what Telegram would be. Um, I think it's, it's good. And I think I'm happy with the name. I'm happy with the logo. Uh, I'm happy with the fact that the community now has its own identity. So, yeah, it's amazing. No, I'm glad it, I'm glad, you know, like I said, I, if I didn't want to just like start the telegram and start the group, uh, so I had to obviously take it to that step where creating obviously a logo and, you know, something that's a representation of what we're trying to do, so. I think the logo is dope. I think it is a very good representation, and I think that starting a TG is definitely a fundamental thing for us to, uh, you know, definitely expand our, our reach and give people a place to uh, chat, hang out, um, 
when there's not a space going on. And obviously, they'll probably always be uh, one of us in there to answer questions if anybody has anything. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited to uh, see the finished project, my guy. Yeah, thank you. But obviously, let's uh, take a second. We can kind of go over over the market today. We know that it was... Uh, not as, you know, not as bullish or not as great as it, it's been for us recently. Uh, but it's still not a bad thing. Like we've talked before, you know, little days like today are work, are going to make sure we, we can move forward uh, here in the near future. So obviously just looking at current market conditions over the last 24 hours, we got Bitcoin that is down 1.63 percent still above 51,000 though sitting at 51,298 dollars in 99 cents um i know i was there was many people talking today uh that i heard that uh, a lot of people are speculating on a on a on a dip you know uh, obviously that's still to be to be seen uh but it was a lot, I was hearing about it a lot more today in spaces and throughout social media about people saying, you know, they're taking profits because they're going to expect a, a nice dip in Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum down 2.75%. We know Ethereum for the last few days has been on a, on a nice on a nice up and up, outperforming Bitcoin for the last couple of days. But today, obviously, down back to that 2900 range. Which yesterday, obviously, cracking three thousand was 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 amazing to see. Uh, I think it had been shoot. Gosh, I don't think we sent seen three thousand since twenty twenty two. I want to say sometime. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the last time we were at three thousand range. Uh, USDT is sitting at ten cents. It has a uh, DPIG. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Now that would be kind of crazy, but I did see a uh, um, what was it a I did see a, an announcement out there. I can't remember where, but there was some. There's a couple things that they were delist in USDC. So I'll have to, if I remember what I, what it was, there was an article I was reading earlier. But there, are a couple platforms out there that are going to be delist in USDC and not minting it no more. So uh, BNB. Having a heck of a day, up over seven percent on the last twenty-four hours, coming in at three seventy-eight eighty-six. Solana down just under five percent on the day, but still above that hard hour mark, sitting at one hundred two twenty-nine. XRP, we don't even don't even need to talk to. It's literally been sitting in the same range for quite a while now. We keep talking about what's it going to take to to make it catch up with the rest of the the rest of the market. Um. Caspa down over a little over four percent, still at that sixteen ninety range, sixteen cents, <laughs> just under seventeen. H bar down four point three four percent on the day, coming in just a little over ten cents. We got Little Finance down just under ten percent on the day, coming in at two dollars and ninety eight cents. Let me see the Algorand is. Down four percent on the day, coming in at fifty six thirty nine. Ave down three, a little over three percent, is at ninety forty four. And then we got SC SC. I don't. I gotta read more into this project, but this thing has been going nuts. And even today, it's up almost twelve percent on the day, coming in at one, a little over one and a half cents. Got to read more into that one because that project has been just performing amazingly over this last week. Uh, and then we got Jasmine. If you guys have ever heard of Jasmine, actually Jasmine did break into the top 100 today. It's currently sitting at number 97, up 37% on the day, coming in at just one, a little over one and a half cents. Obviously, I would say that's probably the biggest gain of the day. Uh, I saw a lot of influencers, a lot of 
uh, individuals on social media definitely talking about Jasmine. And you know, obviously, it's a big deal, you know, cracking the top 100. So, obviously, shout out to the Jazz Jasmine holders, the Jasmine community. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of what what what's going on over there uh, with Jasmine, but obviously, they're doing there's some they're doing something right uh, to be up. You know, 37% over the last 24 hours is great. So congratulations to any of you guys if you guys got in on the Jasmine, uh, Jasmine before it took off. So obviously a more, like I said, a more red day uh, for crypto. Uh, but there are still some winners out there. You know, it's just, it's all about making sure you can find those winners on, on days like today. Uh, but... I'm still bullish. I still think we're headed in the right direction. Uh, and I'm not going to allow anything to to scare me or, or cause fear uh, for me to try to, you know, change my positions or mess around my positions. Because when, I, when you do that, uh, more times than not, you end up losing that battle. Uh, and I'm not about to pay more... Uh, and get less, <laughs> if, 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 if I want to say it that way, uh, of a token or a coin that I hold. So, definitely, definitely, Mr. Burr, Killswitch, Aki, any of you guys up here, how are you guys feeling about the overall market today and, and kind of what you guys have seen going on? Like I said uh, before, it's just another, I beat you, Burr, I beat you, beat you. Go ahead. Yeah, your name, your name is Killswitch, so, you know. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm, try I'm trying to pull the trigger faster, but you know, we might have to switch it to call the quick. Yo, you, right, right. Oh, it's crazy. I didn't even try to. I just was like, oh, I'll go. But no, honestly, I just think it's just another normal day. At the end of the day, I think that there has been some good deals signed this week for some different cryptos that uh, give them some. Huge growth potential. Um, there is a lot of positivity, positive sentiment in the market right now. I think that a lot of people have a lot to be very um, bullish about. And at the end of the day, um, I think we've crossed the threshold of where uh, the point of view that I think that will be the catalyst for us to proceed forward. So that's where I think we're at right now. Mr. Burt. Are you getting rugged again, Bert? Or K Killswitch, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Maybe he's uh maybe he's having some technical difficulties. <laughs> Which obviously wouldn't surprise me, but No, like I said, you know, I'm I'm still extremely bullish on the overall market and and where we're where I, where we're headed, uh, I think the majority of us feel confident enough to to know that we are moving, you know, in the right direction towards the full, the full reversal into a into an all out bull bull cycle. So obviously, you know, we're in the the early morning space with Crypto Latina this morning. And it was kind of being talked about and. I mean, like I said, I think we are in the start of the bull cycle. Obviously, we're still a ways away. If you guys have ever, if you guys were a part of the bull, you know, the last bull cycle, uh, then you understand what I'm saying. Is like it's not quite like when you're uh, that like type of excitement, that type of you know, like you. There's a lot of different you know variables and factors that come into it when you're like in that all-out bull cycle. You're like one, there's literally more projects being launched than any other time uh and that goes for tokens that goes for nft projects you know you're hearing about all these all the metaverses and, and that are going on and, and you know game play to earn gaming uh and i just don't think 
we're quite there yet. Uh, now, I will say I do think we will get there. I would say hopefully in the next, like, you know, next nine months uh, for sure. Maybe less. Like, you never know, obviously, in this space. But uh, I think that this bull cycle will be a little bit different, though, than all the other ones prior. Just because everything that has kind of came into the space and everything that is kind of coming into the space. And there's just so many new things. So it's a lot of unknown territory. Uh, for all of us, I think this bull cycle will be probably the best one yet uh, when it comes to like inflow of money uh, from investors, and that goes all the way from entities to retail. I, like I've said before, I think we'll see the largest influx of new investors as well into the space. So, um, yeah, he must be having issues. Could have kicked him out, but. Uh, I still haven't found nothing that makes me not bullish uh, for 2024. I did. I was reading this article early, earlier uh, about uh, Michael Saylor abandons his plans to sell Bitcoin. That's on the company's because he is on Michael Strategies company sheet. So he's. This was done in an interview on Bloomberg TV where he had said this, but. We'll have to we'll have to see. Obviously, Michael Saylor is somebody that is a a big holder personally of Bitcoin, uh, as well as Michael Strategies. Obviously, is holding. I think they said right there, one hundred ninety thousand Bitcoin. If I got that right, so obviously that's massive. Let's see if we can get Mr. Burt back up here, and then when you are connected, obviously. Go ahead and take the mic, boss fam. What the heck? Just kicked him too? There we go. I think we're good now. What's going on, boss? Hey, Zatani, what's up? Good sweet. Mr. Bird, everybody in the panel. Shout out to a little beautiful space. I see we got a little beautiful floor house. We just came, uh, from uh NFT share space from the I'm from the Orlando community. I'm an investor. Uh shout out to everybody in the, the space. Web three is the future. All you guys are at five, six percent. It's always beautiful to come to these spaces, uh to learn, to gain some more knowledge and to share bullishness, you know, within each other here in these communities. Uh just a little bit about the Volino for those that haven't heard about Vol Vol is a is an email uh, I call it uh, on steroids because that's amazing utility, blue chip utilities. You got off ramps utilities, you got AI technology, you got NFTs that are playable on Steam. Uh, we have OT cards with insane limits that you can ramp off and stay on DeFi, virtual cards without KYC. Uh, we have, uh, Sparkbot. If you're a vegan, you're still out on the streets or you're thinking about being out on the streets here in this upcoming boom market. You spot a bot, uh, right on Telegram. You can start, uh, do it through your Telegram while you're in chat here with your friends. Set limit orders, liquidate portfolios, favorite tokens. Uh, also if you're a project and you need help burning your supply at the multi chain widget, we're here to help the crypto space help better the space. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, man, so, uh, I don't know if I got cut off or not, but, uh, check out the website, man. We have a lot of, a lot of new utilities, man. Bolini.in. Also, make sure you guys are following our Dave and Toshi, uh, the vote in the official page with the blue check mark. I wish nothing but success for each and one of you guys. I love coming to these spaces. Uh, I love the, I love the, hearing the bullish, uh, news, uh, with the Coast Mr. Burke. Tony and uh, everybody in the space, man. It's, uh, let's keep learning. Let's keep building one another, and let's enjoy this beautiful boom market that's upon us. And if I may, right, that that's what I like about the vote community. It's there's a I don't know there's a similarity between the vote community and the say the chain community. Like I don't know if it's me, but tell me if I'm wrong, right? Whenever there's a community member that comes up and talk about vote 
or say the chain. Don't they sound like they're part of the team? And this is how you want to be when you are part of a project, right? You've educated yourself enough about what's going on in the project to the point where when you're talking to people, it's like it almost sounds like you're a part of the team. And that's what I get from Vote. That's what I get from Say the Chain. Both these communities give me the same vibe. You know, and and it, it it's just it, you just cannot ignore it. And for several nights now we've had these spaces. Whenever you have a vote community member that step up and talk about the project or uh, a say the chain community that step up and talk about the project, it always seems like damn, you know, like you guys are like and it and it. You know, so that's 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 very interesting, quite impressive. Yeah, appreciate that, man. I get that a lot, man. I just, I'm just so passionate uh, about the, uh, the project itself. I love the fact that we're an exclusive project, man. Uh, I mean, Web three is for us, the people. You know, we got to take this power and start building in this um, in Web three, because the institutions are here to try to take away our power. I mean, we just let a fucked up system. Excuse my language, but we are the people. We gotta better this web three we got a better for the masses that are about to get on board it and i think there's a lot of beautiful projects that are been building this whole bear market and going is one of them and i seen a lot of beautiful other projects too that have been adding the widget that uh, they've been building on stop throughout this whole bear market and i think that's what it's about making connection going together and building and um, I like what you just said here uh, because it kind of remind me of something I was thinking about the other day, right? And I was thinking about excited all these big corporations. Sorry, guys. Can you hear me? Uh, I had a phone call. Yeah, we can Yeah. So, so, yeah, as these big corporations are coming in, yes, it actually, uh, you know, offers a lot of value to the space. And something I always say is like, don't mistake the fact that they're coming in because we've made this space valuable. And whenever these people come in, they don't come in to save the people, to benefit the people. They come in to take control. And this is what we see as a community that the way that we're hosting these spaces now that we've actually learned from the bear market era, you know, 2022, uh, that we need to do something different. The community of crypto have to unite despite whatever project that you in. Because at the end of the day, these people coming in, these big corporations, the government, they're not coming in to save us. They're coming in to further their agenda which has always been the same. Monopolize, control, and rule over everybody. And understand this, the blockchain offers them, it's a very powerful tool, should they choose to use it that way. But the only way they're going to be able to use it in that manner is if we let them. If we stay divided, then at that point we're going to get conquered. And we can easily get conquered, conquered with the blockchain. Think about this. Every transaction is known. Every transaction is known. Everything you make, you do financially, you do, it's known. So if we stay divided, I don't care what nobody's telling me, oh, crypto's going to be this, crypto's going to be that. Yeah, we won't be in, in another type of prison. We're going to try, we're trying to escape from one prison, which is this current system. We're going to fall into another prison that is far worse than what we're complaining about now if we don't come together. It, because the technology offers them they, this opportunity. But that is if we let them. We can't be kids anymore. Can't be kids anymore. We know for a long time that we had to come together. We didn't have a way to come together. But crypto is the way. It gives us an opportunity. We have never had a, an opportunity to come together on a global aspect than what crypto have provided us. But if we let them, it's going to play against us in a very, very bad way. 
So I like what you said. Uh, it's important that we understand what, where we at. We have to understand the value of, 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 of this technology. And we have to play a part. And we have to play it accordingly and responsibly. No, you're 100% right. And that's something we've, we've talked about many times, too, is like... <laughs> what crypto has you know done for for us you know where we are able to connect with people from all around the world and you know connecting with individuals that i would bet that 99.99999 percent rate that we would never have or never would if it wasn't for crypto and and that's a powerful thing if, if utilized correctly uh, 100%, especially when you're building a network, if you have, you know, connections uh, on all continents, you know, per se, uh, it just allows you to, you know, be able to do, operate and and move and do so many more things than you typically would have. Uh, like, I know that, you know, Killswitch has been talking to Motasco as well as a few other people, uh, from the Middle East about setting up, you know, business operations and stuff uh, over there uh, for some things that we're working on uh, for the future. And that's only possible because of, of social media and because uh, uh, of the crypto platform giving us the, the what I would say, the, um, uh, the opportunity. Platform. The, well, yeah, it's a platform. It's like another platform, 100%. No, but like we all know, it's only possible because uh, of crypto. Go ahead, Kill Switch. Yeah, I was just going to say I think that, you know, the biggest driving force behind uh, innovation in this space is definitely the fact that uh, social media has opened up uh, the doors for so many different relationships that have been positive uh, and some have been negative i can't lie some people that we have met online um and through crypto haven't been the best but i'll tell you what nine out of ten have been good people and that's just what else i'd stand on that no matter what and at the end of the day <clears throat> i look at it like this um right now there is a pretty uh pretty good wealth of knowledge, uh, general knowledge about cryptocurrency. In the U.S., I think that, uh, I think it's about 85 to 90 percent of people have heard of cryptocurrency. Uh, I think the biggest thing that we can do at this point to move things forward without giving too much away is <clears throat> to focus on a few things. Uh, connectivity, um, you know, and, and also driving the force for uh, helping people understand what investment means and what that can do for you. Um, <clears throat> you know, certain religions, there's things where you cannot take, where you cannot have interests associated with accounts, things like that. Um, as far as I know, crypto doesn't break any of those rules. Um, so no matter where you go, you seem to have the ability to, to work with crypto. And that is one great benefit. Um, you know, that crypto has. And what I will say is that bringing the world together and connecting the world uh, allows everyone to start to live at a higher economic level. And that's what everyone, I think, wants. Because if you don't, then that means, you know, you're, you're ass backwards, in my opinion. <clears throat> if everyone starts to make more money, that means that there is more money to be spread throughout the world more money that's spent on trade and other things and more money that goes into people like you and my pockets because you know the rich are always going to get richer we know that um but when the middle class that's been eroded um, can start to come back and kind of can start can start to consolidate and and move itself forward and start to grow again that's when we will really see um you know the rise of i think cryptocurrency at its full power is it's really going to help create uh, an asset class which has been almost wiped out here in America which is 
the middle class and upper to middle class uh, people that have money put away, um, you know, and people that have investments that are worth money that they can rely on uh, for the future. And a lot of people don't have that right now. And it's uh, it's really sad to see that so many Americans have been completely cleaned out and so many people across the globe have been completely cleaned out of any sort of savings at all. So I think crypto is truthfully the only real savior uh, for, you know, mass uh you know, inflation to for it to go down and also for people to recoup all the money that they've lost. Uh, this is the only market that really has the potential to do that and for normal people to get into it. Yeah, and touching back what you said, crypto is actually the only asset that is scarcity for the whole worldwide uh, uh, population. You're talking about 8.5 people in the world. Once they get into here, uh, crypto is the only real uh, scarcity asset. I mean, you look at Bitcoin, man. It's beautiful how it's running. And now all the institutions are chasing after it. But we have the privilege here to pioneer Web3 because we have the power in our hands. And this is the most important time where we want to build and connect and, and be in solid projects that are building uh, Web3 that are changing the, the crypto space and only better because we got to help one another, man. And that's what it's about. 100%. I mean, in my opinion, if, uh, <clears throat> if I can do things that help, you know, millions and millions of people, um, that to me gives me more satisfaction than anything else. Now, if I can make some money doing it, will I be mad about that? No. But am I doing it because I'm making money? I'll be truthful. No, I mean, I'm at the point where I don't really need to do that. I don't need to chase the money in order to uh, make myself happy. I want to start to be able to do things that actually have a true impact on societal, you know, societal impact and really um, make changes. And I know that's what Tultani wants as well, is he wants to be able to be... Uh, truthfully a global leader for change of the positive and mass adoption of cryptocurrency for the simple fact that we realize what it's done for our lives we see what it's done for the people that come into our group uh our space on a nightly basis and, and what it's done for them and we see what it's doing for a whole new group of people that are coming in at this point and so um for us, it's it's a passion, and it's something that we feel deeply about, and I know Mr. Burt feels the same way. Um, he realizes the full potential of cryptocurrency and sees not only what it can do here in America, but what it can do uh, abroad as well, and I think that that's the one thing that uh, brings us all together is the fact that we truly want to see um, cryptocurrency spread and spread the right way and help people in the right way um, and i think that that when you have that integrity and you have that uh that mindset of i'm going to do whatever it takes to be a helping hand a helping force in this community um, you can change a lot of lives and i will say this i i don't think we should wait and going back to the space that we having right now in so many other spaces I don't think we should wait on other people to educate the people. It's on us. We should be the one doing doing the educating because if we wait on them, there's going to be so many people that's left behind. You know, we, we, we see it in this current system. You know, look, look, with the evolution of the internet, now we know how money works. Now we know how credit works. Now we know how so many other things work, but why weren't we taught that at the early stage, at our early age? Why isn't the education system focused on those things that matters in life, but also, but more so focused on things that don't matter? So can we expect these people to come out and teach people properly what cryptocurrency is and how to win and, you know, how to position themselves? We already know we can't. So we have to do the work. You know, if you're winning, 
yeah, just make sure somebody else went for as long as they're willing. Because I do believe on the aspects of helping, but I don't believe in helping anybody that's not willing to help themselves. So, yeah. No, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, there is a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of individuals out there that, uh, you know, a lot of times are expecting or waiting for for a handout, you know. Um, and you have to look at as like how much time, how much effort, you know, you put into it, Uh and that's always been one of my biggest things is like I want to continue to help people that are close to me, family and friends. Uh, but I've learned over time that <laughs> a handout uh, or just giving consistently doesn't solve the, the underlying issues. Uh, there's other things that can be done for to develop, you know, where it doesn't become a revolving door. Uh, and, you know, people really, you know, putting one foot in front of the other and, and, you know, putting in their own work and their own effort. I definitely think that, you know, when people learn how to do this on their own and they have that satisfaction of completing um, even a small first trade right where they make who cares right 100 bucks 300 bucks whatever after gas and everything just for them to be able to you know set up the wallet buy the you know native token then purchase the project they want and then you know hold it for however long they do and then sell and then off ramp it, all those things to just to put all that into um, into use. You know, that's a big first step for a lot of people, and it gives them that confidence to kind of move forward, right, and continue to do it again. Once they see that it's not as complicated as you know, I don't want to say the media, but some people make it seem. Um, then it seems a lot more manageable to them once they do it themselves. And I think that's a lot of things, right? Until you try it, you will believe whatever is said about it because you're like, well, why would all these people say it if it wasn't true? And then you see how, I don't want to say simple because it's not necessarily simple, but how if you follow the steps, it's, you know, it works just fine. Um, how easy that is when you just follow the steps you realize quickly like this is a space that i can operate in if you're proficient whatsoever in computers you can operate in the crypto space now when it comes to you know breaking down charts all these different ways and or coding and and all this type of stuff those are different you know and learning the blockchain and all that those are all different things that you learn um you know, either before you go into the space or as you enter the space, uh, those are things that you want to study. But at the end of the day, um, just to be able to do that first basic trade is something that gives people such a huge amount of um, personal satisfaction. And that's what gets people to have that personal drive to want to do it again. And that's what stops you from having to necessarily give people handouts is if you you know, help them once and they get into a position where, hey, they've made a little bit. Now they know what to do and how to do it. And if they ask you for, you know, guidance or whatever on what to, where to go, what to do, you tell them, do your own research and whatever they feel comfortable doing, they do. And if they make more money off of it, great. If they lose it, well, you know, that happens to all of us sometimes. I'm not going to say I'm a perfect hundred for, you know, a hundred. If I said that, I would be lying. So it's like to say anybody in here that says they've never had a loss, I would be um, very hard pressed to believe them. Not saying it's not possible, just saying I've never seen it myself. So 
Um, you know, we all go through struggles and uh, learning curves in this industry, and I think that's something that is real, very real about it. And uh, that's what teaches a lot of us, you know, how to not make the same mistake twice. And I think that's what life is really about is making if you we all make mistakes but it's not you know the mistakes that you make that define you it's what you do when you make those mistakes and and if you repeat them or not that's what defines the type of people that you are you know and, and your intelligence or whatever it may be and at the end of the day you can still move too fast sometimes and make the same mistake twice like it happens so uh, you know, this is the type of business like we talked about yesterday where you always have to be on the ball when you're dealing with your money. So it's just uh, one of those things where you actually have control of the dollar. <laughs> and uh, you said something that is very important. It's not the mistakes. It's what you do after the mistakes. And people... We were not programmed to think that way, but that's the reality of life. We are always going to make mistakes. You're going to, especially in cryptocurrency, you're going to, you're going to get into some rug pulls. You're going to get scammed. You're going to, whatever, right? But did you learn a lesson? And did you react on the lesson that you've learned? A lot of people tend to do the same thing over and over again. Uh, you know, some people take longer than others to learn. As humans, it's hard for us to change our ways, to adapt. Some people faster than others. Um, but for as long as you, you know, you do something wrong. Like, <laughs> last night I wanted to say something. But I was driving, so I couldn't, I couldn't say it. We were talking about scams and, you know, uh, Toltani was talking about, you know, sending the tokens to the wrong wallet, which was probably in the millions, right? Yep. I, I don't yep. even know how, I don't even know how the hell you sleep at night, but, uh, you know, we've done it. Like, I've Usually had my crying. wallet, right? I've had my wallet wiped <laughs> out. Matter of fact, like four months ago, I had my wallet wiped out. And we talk about moving fast. Yo, crypto move fast, that don't mean you need to. I'm going to say this again. Crypto move fast, that don't mean you need to. There's always going to be a dip. If it's a good project, you may think, man, you know, it, I got to get in today because it's being launched today. Man, listen. If... If it's going to take you some time to do your research on that project, take some time. Because if it lunch, it's going to pump. Right after the pump, you know what comes after, right? A dump. And usually, the dump is far below the, the, the price range of what it was, you know, lunch at. Sometimes, right? You, you, you never miss out on a good project. So, take your time. Because one thing I will tell you guys, just like we talked about last night, a lot of the mistakes came from moving too fast. Every bit of mistakes I've made in the crypto space, and you could name every mistake, I've made them all. And when I analyze that, I've realized it's always been through rushing, especially in the freaking bull market, right? In the bull market, everything's moving fast, and you're moving fast too because you're trying to you try to catch that lunch, and guess what? You know, especially on Telegram, God dog it. You in a program, you in a pro, you in a project. Next thing you know, there's another community that was created, and you forgot to set your settings, your private, your privacy settings the right way. Now they add you to a community that's similar to that project because that project is pumping. Next thing you know, they tell you there's an airdrop or something. And then you, you connect your wallet. Man, listen, let me tell you something like this. Your wallet, you got to treat your wallet like it's your best friend, like it's your kids, like it's your wife, your husband. Don't connect that junk to anything. Anything. Just recently, I received a message that was actually quite weird. It was a message that came from Google Drive. A message came in from Google. I've never received a message from Google Drive. 
So I'm saying this to say this, right? This is the first time since Google have been out. I've had Google on on my phone. I've never received a message on Google Drive. I received a message that was attached to many different people. It was on Google Drive. I, I'm like, damn, I thought that was weird. And it had a link on it. So I'm in cryptocurrency. And I know there's these wallets that would allow you to automatically save your seed phrase to your Google Drive. If you the if you the top person that do that, don't do that. Don't save don't save your seed phrase to a Google Drive because they can get access to it too. So yeah, I mean, yeah, let's keep the conversation going. I I I, I do have a lot to say tonight because I can speak. Please don't hold him down. He's speaking. I love, and I, I love when you get with it, Bert, and you just drop knowledge bombs. It's like my favorite thing to listen to, honestly. You, you know, know, a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of times, Mutasco have a different level of way of speaking because Mutasco's way of speaking comes from a intelligence that is based around data aliens oh data data okay yeah yeah, he, 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 yeah he, 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 hey, he's right up there with the grays he's right up there with the grays so <laughs> i don't know i don't know you know what i'm saying so he could be a clone he could be an ai he could be a uh you know family member of et we don't know we still you know we, we may never know when it comes to mutasco we and may never know we may he's we may never know we may never know, man. That brother, and and, and and you know, one thing I like about Mutasco is the fact that, and we said it a couple of spaces ago, is the fact that it's one thing to say things, but it's one another thing to back it up. And Mutasco have oh, always yeah. back up every single statement, and I'm like, man, what, I, yo, how much data you have in that brain? And where do you find the time, bro? Like, knowing that we know what you do for a living, where do you find the time? But you know, that shows you, you know, there's, 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 there's some of us that are set out there to win, and you could see it. You could see the people that's going to win. And honestly, to be honest with you guys, I think all of you guys going to win. Because like Kill Switch always said, man, you could be anywhere else in the world, but you here. Some of you got kids, some of you got family members, some of you got people that's probably in a hospital bed right now, but you're here. That's the only way to save yourself and save the people you love is by taking advantage of this new ever, uh, innovation that's about to change the whole world. It's already changing the whole world. So if we're talking about financial freedom, you know, uh, creating a legacy and da 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 da, where's Oh, you're going to find that opportunity right now at the current state of this economy, current state of the world. It's through crypto because it offers everything. You just got to listen to Jerome Powell four hours a day, and that's how you get to financial freedom right there. <laughs> no, but in, in all reality, Mr. Burt, you could not be more correct. Uh, you know, right here, right now, as you say, is the best time. Um, right now is the best time to lead. Right now is the best time to put your foot forward. And right now is the best time to lead from the front with what we're doing and how we're trying to um, reach as many people as we can, uh, as much as we possibly can. I think that, you know, there's, there's such a, a change that I feel in the air Um this bull run and it, it might just be me um and it might just be because i've been through it before um but i feel more of a, a unitedness amongst uh everybody in the crypto sphere and i'm starting to feel this kind of community driven aspect of hey look um i support you because i know that you're a good project and that you're doing the right thing same with you like you know what i mean and it's like everybody that's positive and that is doing the right thing is saying hey you know these people are doing the right thing too and that's major because how many of us just own one token or one coin 
And what I'll say is this. If you do, I'm not here to tell you what to do. It's not financial advice. But I never put my eggs all in one basket. I've done it before. I'm not going to lie to you. And it did not turn out well for me. So what I will tell you is personally that, you know, diversification, um, which we've talked about is a whole another issue, whole another topic that we could take hours on, uh, is something that's extremely important for the simple fact that uh, being well diversified and, and understanding what you're invested in are probably the two most important things, I think, uh, when it comes to being in crypto. So what that means to me is, understanding really what's going on in the project and what that also break it down one step further is you know who are the top wallets who owns the most of the supply uh you know what's the volume like what's the liquidity like uh those big wallets if one of them sells are they going to probably take all the liquidity with them or is there room in there um and in addition to that being diversified you know what that means to me is, yes, having some blue chips, having some what I would call intermediaries, having some stable, and then having some what I call play money or, um, you know, meme coin space where, or altcoin, whatever, uh, where you want to go and you want to put in, you know, a decent amount of money uh, either on one or a few different projects that you actually do some research on, really get to know the project and then put your money behind it. Because <clears throat> we all know that uh, Big Daddy Bit and, you know, ETH are great, and they are huge money makers, and they've made, you know, probably more millionaires than anything else, I'll guarantee it. But, uh, you know, the micro-cap space, uh, you know, or starting at the micro-cap space and then watching it go and cause them up, that is how people like us really make our money. Um, and, and a lot of us realize that, uh, it make those huge gains that we all hear about. And as somebody who's, you know, made a 500 X, made a 250 X, made a hundred X, um, I, I can say that I know what it's like to do that. It's not easy. Um, but when you get lucky and you get in that position, um, you're very, very, very thankful for the fact that you diversified um, and took a little bit of your money out of something that was maybe a little bit more stable and you took a little bit of risk. Uh, there's always a risk versus reward um, option in anything that you do. Crypto is no different. Uh, it's just with crypto, you're, you're playing for keeps and, uh, you know, that's a little bit more serious. So, um, you know, I look at crypto as like really money managing for yourself like that's really what it is is it's managing your own bag managing your own assets and you are now in charge and you have the you know you're behind the bus or you're controlling the boat as they say and you show you choose where they where you sail and you choose where to you know pour it up and you choose you know where to unload your bounty uh, and that's kind of the the unique factor about um about crypto is that you control what you do and that's uh that's what i love about it and i think that's what as mass adoption comes on board when people realize that yes you control uh when you buy when you sell all these factors um that they don't get on a normal daily basis it's going to change the way that the world looks at finance forever and uh people in the developing world will be uh ecstatic to be able to throw twenty dollars thirty dollars at something and potentially make two grand five grand i mean think about how much money that would be in some of those countries so just really exciting for me no you're and you're 100 percent right because which like that's what I, a lot of times when i'm talking to people that maybe don't you know have no, no knowledge of the space or, or bare minimum knowledge of the space I, that's a lot that's something i do bring up and mention to them is like Look at it like this aspect. You are the bank. If you are in crypto, you are the bank now. You know, and that is a that is a beautiful thing, you know, because you get to control your money, you get to control what assets it goes into, you get to you get to capitalize on all the profit and, and, and keep it for yourself. Whereas the bank <laughs> capitalizes on the majority of the profit and gives you scraps 
you know, barely anything. We've seen what, you know, a traditional savings account has gone, you know, down to over the, you know, the last decade, and it's truly just not worth it, you know. Uh, and obviously banks depend on people, you know, holding their money into them because that's obviously how they make money. But uh, I think a lot of people, if you can just simply tell them, you know, in that in that way, like, you become the bank, uh, I think it could entice a, a lot of people into wanting to get into this uh, this space. Obviously, there's a lot to learn. Uh, a, good, a good friend of mine, also Cryptorella, that joins us here uh, most nights. Uh, he was somebody that, you know, he he seen what I was able to accomplish and, and do in the space. And, you know, coming from, you know, his background is like similar to mine. Uh, and he quite didn't understand it, but he seen like, wow, like it can, you can really, you know, make obviously financial gains. Uh, and it does, it can, it, it is a lot of work, it's a lot of time. Uh but through him witnessing what I went through, it has motivated him now to, you know, what I like to see from people is, like, he's always hitting me up, like, asking me questions, you know, telling me to send him videos on this and that. Uh, he's start, he started to do his own research now as he's starting to, you know, learn what more and more, uh, more and more about this space. Uh, and I tell him, you know, I was having a conversation with him last night after we got done with this space here. And. Uh, the other space uh, that we went to afterwards, and I was like, "You, you remind me of when I first got into uh, the crypto space, like I, I am now. You know, I went home and just started getting behind the cube, the keyboard, and you know, I'm googling everything, I'm watching YouTube videos, I'm reading, uh, and I said, that's that's what's going to drive you to have success in this space is that that determination, you know, as well as the dedication." Uh, and then as you learn about the space, you become more involved in the space, you, you know, you develop that passion for it. Uh, and I think that's something that comes over time. I don't think you just hear the word crypto and it's like, yep, I'm in love with it. That's what I want to do. Like, it takes time to, you know, develop that passion for this space. So, uh, and there's many people in here that are extremely passionate about the space. I know Mr. Bird is, Kill Switches, Crypto Latina, you know, Boss, Butasco, I, get, I mean, everybody in here is, uh, to some sort of level, um, because we spend a majority of our time, you know, in these spaces, on social media, you know, posting about, you know, the projects that we're a part of, and the communities that we're involved in, and, you know, spending time with the other, with the community members, uh, and, you know, kind of go back on what Kill Switch said about the community aspect is, I still, to this day, support the good projects that are still here that I've invested in. I may not be a holder of the token uh, anymore, but I still support those projects 100%. You know, STC I've been out of for, for quite a while, but I still support it. Volt I've been out of for quite a while, but I still support it. Uh, and I will continue to support them because I believe they are great communities. I believe that they have good leadership uh, and that they can have potential to to go places and, and make people uh, profits. And that's what obviously matters. Uh, I typically, I'll be honest with you, I typically, when I get into a project and I get out of it, I typically don't go back into uh, a project that I've already, you know, kind of rolled that wave in. Uh, but for the first time since uh, going into crypto full-time a few years ago, uh, it is getting harder and harder when we do have, you know, a project like STC side of chain that has the blockchain now and has a lot of potential uh, in the future. Same thing with Volt. You know, like I've said many times, Volt has, was born in a bear, so it's never actually been around for a bull market. Uh, and with this type of community, as, as strong as it, both of them, uh, they can definitely, definitely uh, go places and have all the potential. Uh, and it's kind of brought me to that place like, hey, I might, for the first time, uh, reinvest in a project that I've already invested and took profits out of. So, and that, and that just shows you that what these communities are doing, what these leaders are doing is beneficial, is good. Because it has me going against uh, something... I've always told myself I would never do. 
Uh, and that's a good thing, though, because that means I'm obviously, you know, looking at things differently, looking at opportunities uh, differently as well. You know, go ahead, Kill Switch. <laughs> 